Hello friends, I'm Aga from Arbiz Artist and in today's video I'm gonna show you how to bring your images to life and start crushing your Instagram posts doing things like this. It's a combination of still image and animation or video and it's called cinemagraph. We all know that animations take ages to render and you probably need render farm service to do this. But this small animation was rendered on one computer overnight. There are 9 essential steps you have to follow and keep in mind. All the rules that apply to still images apply here too. Camera setup is very important. Your composition has to be on point. Lighting and materials should be outstanding as always. Keep in mind colors. And your assets should match your styling. If you haven't seen the video where I discuss all these steps, you can find it here. It's way easier to tell a story through a video than through an image. Simply because we have more frames to use. So don't waste your chance and use it for your advantage. Let's talk about this image. There are no people visible in this visualization. But if you look at this, you may think that somebody just went out. And you may be curious, what is this person doing there? Maybe reading a book or drinking some coffee? Is this character alone or maybe with somebody? In this case, it doesn't really matter what exactly you'll see because we didn't want to show anything particular. We used open story intentionally because we want to make you engaged and make you wonder. After you establish what you want to show, you will have to find or create an animated object. We will use curtain blowing on the wind. Let me know in the comments if you want me to create a tutorial on how to do it from scratch. For now, we'll share with you our model. You can find the link to this in the description. Merge the object into your scene. As you can see, the model is not moving. We have to do one more thing. Add a point cache modifier and load the animation file. Awesome, but as you can see here, Curtain animation end frame is 960, so let's change our animation end to 962. To get the best results out of your cinema graph, you'll have to make it look seamless. Our animation is only 10 seconds, but there is an impression that it lasts forever. I will start by changing the frame rate to 24 frames per second. I use 24 frames per second because most Hollywood movies use this frame rate, so it looks the most cinematic. Let's position our model in the right place and preview animation. We'll have to find a time frame where the model starts and finishes in a similar position. Keep in mind it shouldn't be too short nor too long. I will change the end frame back to 960. It has been changed because we changed the frame rate.
I will choose this part between frame number 600 and 839. This will give me 240 frames, so 10 seconds using 24 frames per second. Let's change start time and end time. Now, let's move the curtain, so it's out of frame on the beginning and end of animation. This way the look will be seamless. It looks great! I create an RGB basque so I'd be able to color correct certain objects in post-production. To do so, I have to apply different object IDs to models I want to include on the mask. Now, go to Settings, Render Elements and add C-Masking Mask. Let's change the mode to RGB and apply the object ID used before. If you have more than 3 objects, you will have to add another render element. Let me show how it works. We have a different color for each object. We'll have to render the full frame only once, so this way we'll save a tons of time. Let's choose resolution. The perfect dimension for Instagram are 1080 by 1350. I will render twice that size to get better quality, but if you don't have a powerful computer and want to save some time, the standard dimension will work just fine. When the render is ready and saved, we can render our curtains. I will play the preview to see how large the region I need to render. I will have to add some additional space to get the shadow moving on the carpet as well. Now, let's draw the region and play the preview again to double check if everything is set up correctly. I will add some more space at the bottom. Great! Settings will be the same. We just have to change time output to active time segment and save the render outputs. Make sure you have a free space wherever you're saving. Also, don't forget to set up the rendering limit. I prefer to use the pass limit. Render one frame to test how many passes are enough. After that, just hit the render button and wait. I will use Adobe After Effects to compose my cinemagraph. Open the program and create a new composition. Type the same dimension as your render. Choose 24 frames per second and the same duration as your 3ds Max animation. 240 in my case.
Import the still image and drag and drop to the composition and align to the time frame. Next, I will import the curtain animation. You will just have to select the first frame, but make sure Open EXR sequence is selected. You can see that by default, image sequences are imported as 30 frames per second. To change it, right click on the sequence and choose Interpret footage, and just change frame rate to 24. Drag and drop your sequence over the still image to then preview the result by hitting the spacebar. It's not done yet. Notice that the edge of the region is not blending nicely. To fix this, we'll have to draw a mask. Select the pen tool and do so. To blend it better, open the mask menu and adjust the mask feather option. Now it looks great. Lastly, we can do some tweaks to make it look even better. We will use uh, the mask pre-render to apply some effects only to specific objects. Import the mask from the still image and drag and drop it to the timeline. Import the mask sequence the same way we imported the curtain animation. Remember to change the frame rate. We will compose these two layers into one. Select them both, right click and choose pre-compose. Now let's go to effect and preset stop and find the shift channel effect. Drag and drop it onto the mask layer. Change the Take Alpha From option to Red. This way we are separating only the parts of the animation that are red. Duplicate the mask layer by clicking Ctrl D and change the colors. Let's create a new adjustment layer. Position it below the mask and add alpha mod from the mask. Now, if 
if I add curves to the adjustment layer, you can see that it works only on the curtains. We can do the same with the bed and the carpet. You can also add another adjustment layer on top, which will work on the whole animation. And it's done! The last step is to export the animation. Go to File, Export, Add to Adobe Media Encoder Queue. Media Encoder will open. You can choose where to export the file here. And here, you can change the settings. I will export the default. H264. This will give me MP4 format. We don't have to export audio. Let's choose render at maximum depth. Change bitrate encoding to VBR2 pass, increase target bitrate and maximum bitrate, and check use maximum render quality. This way, we will get much better quality. You can see the estimated file size here. Then just hit OK and we're done. I hope you'll find this very useful and I cannot wait to see your cinemagraphs. Tag me on the Instagram and use artist hashtag so I can find it. Thanks for watching and also don't forget to like this video if you found this interesting, share it, subscribe and do all these wonderful things. See you guys in the next video.